looking for a great Valentine's Day treat and gift idea? Well, look no further because in this video, I'm going to share my red velvet hot chocolate bomb recipe and some cute decorating ideas. Welcome back adventurers. Thank you so much for joining me for another fun food adventure. If this is the first time that you're seeing me, my name is Carly and welcome to my channel, Adventures in Yum. Here I share delightfully delicious food videos that I hope will inspire you to go on your own food adventures. I share recipes for mostly sweet treats, some savory eats, food reviews, and yes, cocktails too. If that sounds awesome to you, please consider subscribing. Hot chocolate bombs became super popular during the fall and holiday season. So I decided that it would be fun to come up with a Valentine's Day version. Between the red velvet flavor and the cute decorations, these make great gifts to show some love to family, friends, or your significant other. If you haven't seen my other hot chocolate bomb tutorials yet, make sure to check out the links in the description below. What's your favorite kind of red velvet treat to enjoy on Valentine's Day? Let me know in the comments below. Now, let's make the red velvet hot chocolate bombs with adorable decorations. First, we're going to make the shells like in my first hot chocolate bomb video, but this time I decided to use a geometric heart shape mold instead of the half sphere molds. For these ones, you can either use Wilton red candy melts or Ghirardelli vanilla melting wafers dyed with Wilton red food gel color. My preference is using Ghirardelli melting wafers, but Wilton candy melts still work for the hot chocolate bombs. You may just need to slightly thin the candy melts with a teeny tiny bit of vegetable oil. I found that about two and a half cups of the candy melts is great for making two sets of hot chocolate bombs. Add the candy melts to a microwave safe bowl and heat for 30 seconds. Remove the bowl, stir the wafers around, and then heat for an additional 15 seconds at a time until all the wafers are completely melted. Make sure to stir it in between each heating because if you burn them, you'll have to scrap those candy melts and start all over again. If you're using Ghirardelli vanilla melting wafers, mix in about a half to three quarter teaspoon of the red food gel color after the first 30 seconds in the microwave, and then continue to heat in small increments until completely melted. Now that the melting wafers are fully melted, as always, we're going to spoon a little bit into the wells of the mold. Use the back of the spoon or food brush to brush it up the sides. Gently tap the mold on the counter to remove excess bubbles and place this mold on a flat surface in the freezer for about one to two minutes or until the melting wafers have completely hardened. In addition to the geometric hearts, I decided to make some hot chocolate bombs using this cool Wilton lips mold I purchased last year at Joann's around Valentine's Day. I unfortunately have not been able to find this particular mold for this year, but they do have a silicone rose mold that would make super cute hot chocolate bombs for Valentine's Day. Now that the candy melts have hardened, we're going to work quickly to add the secondary layer of candy melts, making sure to focus on the sides of the mold so that they're reinforced and less likely to crack or break when removed from the mold. You may need to add a tiny bit of candy melts to the bottom because the mold goes slightly up in the center, so we want to make sure that this part of the mold is completely covered as well. Once we're done, pop them in the freezer for a minute or two to harden. Remember that you can always do the chocolatier method if you do not prefer the spoon method. I very briefly talk about this method in both my part one and part two hot chocolate bomb videos. After demolding the shells, we're going to add two teaspoons of hot chocolate powder, two teaspoons of powdered buttermilk, half a teaspoon of unsweetened dark cocoa powder, one teaspoon of culinary crystals, which are totally optional. I just think they're a fun surprise and an optional pinch or about an eighth teaspoon or less of salt to help balance the sweetness and bring out the flavor a little more. Once we seal them up, we're ready to decorate. For the first decoration, we're using a food brush to brush the hot chocolate bomb with some wilting glitter shimmer dust. The one I happen to be using here is the pearl color. What's great about this option is that you can also use it at the beginning of making your hot chocolate bomb shells. Simply brush the mold with edible glitter before adding your candy melts and make the rest of the hot chocolate bomb as usual. Just like our first decoration, the next one can be done before or after making the shells of the hot chocolate bombs. Simply dip a small food brush into edible metallic gold paint. Hold the tip of the brush about four to six inches away from the hot chocolate bomb and repeatedly hit the back of the brush. If you're doing the splatter before making the shells, then do the same method just over the silicone mold. Let it slightly dry for about five to 10 minutes and then proceed to make the hot chocolate bomb as usual. For our third decoration style, heat some candy melts in a microwave safe bowl. 
Once they are completely melted, add a little bit of vegetable oil and thoroughly mix it into the candy melts. Add the candy melts to a piping bag and drizzle it over either part of the hot chocolate bomb or the whole hot chocolate bomb. Immediately add sprinkles before the candy melts have a chance to harden. Sprinkle mixes are great for edible decorations. For this hot chocolate bomb, I added a combination of two Wilton Valentine's Day sprinkle mixes. For this next hot chocolate bomb, I added a drizzle of black candy melts and some of Sprinkle Pop's Vintage Rose Gold Sprinkle Mix. For these next two hot chocolate bombs, after adding a drizzle of white candy melts, I added a mixture of red, dark pink, light pink, and purple sugar sprinkles. Sugar sprinkles are a great way to add a cool bling look to your hot chocolate bombs. And for these hot chocolate bombs, I love these edible pink heart sprinkles because they add a pretty color and adorable Valentine's Day vibes. Before I reveal my other decoration ideas, make sure to hit that like button and click subscribe. This next decoration is one of my favorites. Use a large food brush to brush a light layer of candy melts onto the hot chocolate bombs. The candy melts can set really fast, so immediately add a generous amount of sugar sprinkles. Once the candy melts harden, you can shake off the excess sugar sprinkles. You can either use a solid color like the gorgeous red, or a combination of red and purple, or even use a combination of red, dark pink, light pink, and purple like we used earlier in this video. Finally, we're doing a combination of some of the other decorating techniques. First, we're going to drizzle either part or all of the hot chocolate bomb with melted candy melts. Then immediately add a generous amount of multicolor sugar sprinkles. Next, add a few of the larger pieces from one or a couple of your sprinkle mixes. You may need to gently press the sprinkles into the candy melts to make sure that they adhere. An optional fancy finishing touch is to add edible gold leaf. I follow a lot of baking content creators on Instagram that sometimes add edible gold leaf to finish their projects. I've wanted to give it a try for so long, so I finally purchased some. Use a food paintbrush to transfer pieces of edible gold leaf onto the hot chocolate bombs. Gold leaf can be a little bit finicky to work with, but it's pretty easy once you get the hang of it. And last, but certainly not least, a few sprays of edible glitter adds the perfect shimmering touch. Add about six to eight ounces of hot milk to your hot chocolate bomb. The powdered buttermilk does clump up a bit when exposed to the liquid. To fix this, you can just press the clumps onto the side of your mug and continue to mix until everything is thoroughly combined. You can find links to a bunch of the products I used in this video in the video description. You can find this red velvet hot chocolate bomb tutorial on my website, adventuresinyum.net. The link is in the description below. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'll see you next time for another fabulous fun food adventure.